Antithrobin deficiency. If you're driving on a highway, you usually see traffic police officers managing the flow to prevent heavy traffic. That's essentially how antithrobin works in your bloodstream. It's the cool cop keeping your clotting factors from getting too rowdy. But if you have antithrobin deficiency, it's like the traffic police in your bloodstream went on a permanent vacation. Without supervision, your blood starts clotting excessively and causing a major traffic jam in your vein. It's like your blood cells are the world's most intense game of music musical chairs and when the music stops they all freeze in place. But unlike the fun party game, this version can lead to some not so fun consequences. This overzealous clotting can lead to two potentially fatal conditions like deep vein thrombosis, which are blood clots that usually happen in the legs causing pain and swelling. It's like your leg decides to throw a surprise party but nobody's having fun. And then there is pulmonary embolism, when a clot travels to your lungs causing chest pain and shortness of breath. This condition is often inherited. It's like your ancestors looked at all the cool things they could pass down, a vintage record collection, grandma's secret recipe, or maybe even a swanky pocket watch, and instead went, nah, let's give them a faulty traffic system instead. Treatment usually involves blood thinners, which are basically like adding more traffic cops to your bloodstream. Methemoglobinemia. So, your red blood cells are like a fleet of tiny oxygen delivery trucks. Normally, they zoom around your body, dropping off oxygen for your tissues. They're the most efficient delivery system you've ever seen, like Amazon, but for your cells, minus the cardboard boxes and overzealous packaging. Now, if you have methemoglobinemia, instead of truck drivers, you'd have a bunch of confused pizza delivery guys. These new drivers, called methemoglobin, are absolutely terrible at delivering oxygen. They pick it up all right, but then they hang on to it like it's the last slice of pepperoni supreme pizza. So your body's tissues would just sit there, tapping their feet, wondering where their oxygen delivery is. It's like waiting for a package that's constantly out for delivery, but never arrives. Due to this lack of oxygen, your skin, lips, and nails would begin to turn blue like you're auditioning for the live-action movie of the Smurfs. This would be accompanied by body weakness, nausea and vomiting, and an intense intense headache that feels like the Beatles are performing their greatest hits concert inside your skull. These symptoms require immediate treatment, or else you might start to experience signs of central nervous system depression and seizures. Only a few cases of this condition have been documented worldwide, and the few people with this disorder are either born with it or developed it by exposure to toxic substances or using recreational drugs like laughing gas. Bernard Solier Syndrome If your health is at 100% and you mistakenly step on a Lego, you'll only feel a sharp pain and nothing more. But if you have Bernard Solier Syndrome, stepping on a Lego by mistake would seriously bruise your feet to the point of heavy bleeding. Like, the amount of blood coming out of the injury would look like you were shot in the foot. It's like your body decides to turn a simple ouch moment into a scene from a B-grade horror movie. Now, the cause of this leaky situation is that you have a genetic mutation that causes you to have a low platelet count. You see, one of the jobs of your platelets is to stick together and plug up any leaks in your blood vessels, a process known as blood clotting. It's your body's version of a quick fix, like slapping duct tape on a leaky pipe. But due to this mutation, the slightest scratch could tear your skin and you'll literally be gushing blood from it all because your platelets are too low to form proper clots. This would make any injury you have heal at the same speed as a snail. You'll also experience constant nosebleeds, bleeding under your skin, and heavy bleeding during your menstrual cycle. This condition affects one in a million people worldwide, making it rarer than a politician actually telling the truth. Cyclic Neutropenia Let's say your body is a bakery, and neutrophils, a type of white blood cell, are the pastry chefs. However, if you have cyclic neutropenia, your bakery would have a bizarre business model. Every 21 days, it decides to give all its pastry pastry chefs a mandatory vacation simultaneously. So in just about three to six days, there's a severe shortage of these neutrophil chefs. During this time, you're more vulnerable to infections than a computer running Windows 95 without a firewall. You would get a fever, fatigue, and mouth sores as if you scrubbed the insides of your mouth with sandpaper and then poured gravel inside for good measure. Your gums, respiratory tract, and digestive system would be a breeding ground for infections and diseases. But just just when you think your condition will get worse, all the neutrophil chefs come
come back from their vacation the same way they left, sudden and unexpected. This basically means that your body would start automatically fighting the infections like your life depends on it. It's the immune system equivalent of cramming for an exam the night before. This crazy cycle repeats itself every 21 days like a sitcom running out of new ideas. It's as if your immune system is stuck in a creepy time loop. This condition is caused if you inherit a defective gene from one of your parents. Sadly, there is no cure for this condition, so during the period your white blood cells take its annual 21-day vacation, you can only keep yourself healthy by taking lots of vitamins and antibiotics. Wiscott Aldrich Syndrome So, your little bundle of joy has been growing like a weed for six months, hitting all those Instagram-worthy milestones. But suddenly he's visiting the doctor more than a junkie goes to their dealer, and also developing eczema like crazy. These symptoms are the highlights of Wiscott Aldrich Syndrome, which exclusively affects three in one million infant boys worldwide. It is an inherited genetic condition that limits the functions of your child's immune system and platelets, which are smaller blood cells that control bleeding. So if you're a baby with Wiscott Aldrich Syndrome, your body would be open 24-7 for every germ in the neighborhood because your body's natural bodyguard can't kick out infections. It's like your body's defense team went AWOL and left the welcome mat out for infections with complimentary snacks and a mint on the pillow. Also, with less platelet production, a simple knee scrape would make blood gush like a broken fire hydrant. You'll also get more nosebleeds than a boxer in the 12th round and have more bruises than a ripe banana. Your life expectancy with this disease would be cut very short and only a stem cell transplant can give you a chance to survive. Fabry disease. So, your cells are like tiny houses, and each has a garbage disposal system that breaks down fats so they don't pile up in your blood vessels and tissues. Unfortunately, if you are among the 175,000 people with Fabry disease, then you'd have a glitch in your disposal system. It'll be like someone replaced your high-tech trash compactor with a broken piggy bank. As a result of this, your cells would be unable to break down fats, so they would begin to accumulate in your blood and tissues. It's like when you leave all of your junk anywhere and they end up piling and littering your entire household. As these cellular houses get increasingly cluttered with fats, they will start malfunctioning. This buildup can cause all sorts of wacky symptoms like high levels of proteins in your urine, swollen limbs, and burning pain in your hands and feet as if you're constantly walking on hot coals while juggling fireballs. You would experience decreased sweating like your body's natural cooling system is on strike, and this would lead to severe complications like kidney failure, nerve damage, and heart disease because apparently hoarding fats in your body wasn't enough problems already. Unfortunately, Fabry's disease is caused by a genetic mutation, hence there is no cure for it. But enzyme replacement therapy can slow down the buildup of fats to help you live a relatively healthy lifestyle. Congenital dyserythropoietic anemia, CDA. Imagine giving drawing papers and crayons to a toddler and asking them to recreate one of Picasso's art. Let's just say there would be a lot of creative differences with really bad results. This is exactly what happens in your bone marrow and red blood cells if you have congenital dyserythropoietic anemia, or CDA. Instead of a smooth assembly line, you have a chaotic art studio with a toddler as the artist. You see, in a healthy body, the bone marrow produces red blood cells that look like a flat disc with no nucleus. However, with CDA, your bone marrow produces very few normal red blood cells and plenty of abnormal red blood cells with weird shapes and sizes and some might even have more than one nucleus. These defective red blood cells are basically the cellular version of that one friend who always shows up to the party in the craziest costume ever. They're memorable, sure, but they're not exactly blending in or doing what they're supposed to. As a result, your body is forced to work with only a few normal red blood cells, which makes it lack the right amount of oxygen it needs to function correctly. This leaves you looking paler than a ghost and feeling tired all the time, as if you're constantly dragging yourself through a Monday morning after a weekend-long movie marathon. Your liver and spleen would also kick into overdrive because they are trying to clear out those weirdly shaped blood cells. This would cause them to store excess irons and swell up like baby elephants. Over time, the stored iron can cause severe damage that may lead to organ failure and long-lasting diseases such as permanent scarring and damage of the lungs, diabetes, and heart failure. Diamond Black Fan Anemia, DBA. Picture your bone marrow as a bustling toy factory churning out red blood cells faster than elves make presents at 
Christmas. But in Diamond Black Fan Anemia, it's like the factory workers responsible for making red blood cells decide to go on an extended coffee break forever. As a result, your bone marrow's productivity would drop faster than a lead balloon, leaving you unable to produce enough red blood cells. It's like trying to paint the town red, but your paint bucket is completely empty. You see, these red blood cells are crucial for carrying oxygen around your body, so without them, you're basically trying to run a marathon while holding your breath. You'd always be tired and pale like you're auditioning for the role of Snow White, minus the sparkly skin and good looks. And for the cherry on top of this anemic dessert, you would be born with physical abnormalities like missing or misshapen thumbs or a small head. It's like your genes played a game of Mad Libs with your body development. People with this condition are born with it, and they are vulnerable to developing cancer later in life. But proper medication can give you a 75% survival rate. Glantzman thrombosthenia. This rare blood disorder is all about platelets. You know, those tiny blood cells that help you stop bleeding when you get a cut? If, unfortunately, you're among the one in a million people born with Glantzman thrombosthenia, your platelets would be missing a crucial protein that usually helps them stick together to stop bleeding. It's like they're trying to hold hands, but someone coated their palms with butter, so they're essentially slipping and sliding past each other like greased up bowling balls. With your platelets unable to stick together, any minor injury turns into a blood donation speed run. You'd bruise easier than an overripe banana in a toddler's lunchbox, and even the most minor cut would turn you into a bleeding human fountain. If you want to learn more about all the weird businesses your blood can get involved in, join our Discord server today, which will give you all the information you need. Paroxysmal Nocturnal Hemoglobinuria, PNH. So, the first thing you do when you wake up every morning is to take a trip to the bathroom and evict that overnight tenant from your bladder before starting your day. But today, something is different. The color of your pee is darker than your ex's soul, like someone emptied your favorite cola into the toilet bowl before you used it. Plot twist, that isn't cola, but your pee mixed with your blood. This is usually the first indication that you have paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobinuria, or PNH. Just imagine your red blood cells are like tiny submarines cruising through your bloodstream. Normally, these subs have a protective coating that protects them from your body's defense system. But if you have this disease, it's like someone forgot to apply that coating to some of your cellular subs. So your immune system sees them as foreign bodies and launches a nuclear missile. It's your body playing a very aggressive game of battleship with itself. As a result, your red blood cells burst and release hemoglobin into your bloodstream. It's like all the submarine crew members decided to go for a swim. So when you take a leak in the middle of the night or early morning, your pee would either be red, brown, or dark, as if there's a cola factory inside your bladder. Aside from the colored pee, you would equally experience stomach and back pain, erectile dysfunction, and shortness of breath. As scary as this condition may seem, it can be treated with medications to suppress your immune system or get a bone marrow transplant, essentially replacing your entire blood cell factory with a new model. Hereditary spherocytosis. So, typically, your red blood cells are like little flexible discs floating around in your blood. They're supposed to be all bendy and squishy, like an elastic band, so they can squeeze through tiny spots in your blood vessels. But if you're born with hereditary spherocytosis, your red blood cells won't look like the little flexible discs. Instead, they would puff up into little bloated spheres as if they ate too much at the cellular buffet. And these spherical cells are about as flexible as a bowling ball. As if that isn't enough, your spleen, which is usually your blood cell's chill quality control officer, would suddenly become an overeager bouncer of the circulatory system. It would aggressively target these abnormally spherical cells, treating them like unwanted intruders. But instead of just kicking them out, it destroys them at an alarming rate leading to their premature breakdown. It's like your spleen watched one too many action movies and decided to become the Terminator on the abnormal red blood cells. This rapid breakdown of red blood cells happens very quickly, leaving your body short on the cells it needs to transport oxygen efficiently. This causes a condition known as hemolytic anemia. Without this speedy supply of oxygen to your cells, you'll always be exhausted, like you're constantly recovering from an all-night Netflix bin. Your heart would beat faster than it should, and your blood pressure would be lower than your phone's battery at the end of a long day. In addition to the anemia, your spleen would be swollen from holding on to excess abnormal red blood cells. And as you get older, you develop jaundice and gallstones. About 1 in 5,000 babies are born with this condition, and the mortality rate is 1 per 1,000 patients each year.
congenital amigocaryocytic thrombocytopenia, CAMT. Imagine your bone marrow is throwing a blood cell party. Usually, there's this cool DJ called the megakaryocyte that spins out platelets like they're the hottest tracks. However, in congenital amigocaryocytic thrombocytopenia, or CAMT, this DJ never shows up at the party. The turntables are empty, the dance floor is bare, and a serious lack of platelet action is going on. This condition is essentially your body's version of a total platelet platelet blackout. It's as if your bone marrow got amnesia and completely forgot to include platelet production in its job description. The result is that your bloodstream is severely understaffed in the clotting department, which is needed to stop you from bleeding. Without your clotting abilities, you'd easily get injured and bruises. You might also have tiny red dots under your skin due to small bleeds. People with CAMT are born with it, and if they don't get platelet transfusions or a bone marrow transplant, their bone marrow might start slacking off on producing other blood cells too. Thank <laughs> you.